including up to and including this deal that didn't pass through that didn't get get enough support in the Senate, the trade-off for any sort of help towards a path towards citizenship for people uh, who are undocumented in the United States has to come at the cost of spending billions of dollars more at the border to try and militize, militarize it further, to try and uh, deter more people from showing up versus actually helping the people who are actually there. Right, because if you look at the push factors, Chris, I mean, you can talk about investment in these countries. You can talk about addressing sort of some of the underlying crises that we're seeing vis-a-vis -vis climate change. Those are long tail things. In reality, you're going to continue to have people who have the critical need that you already laid out. And part of the answer here is is pretty technocratic. It is about judges who are able to process these cases. It is about caseworkers who are able to assess whether or not someone has a legitimate claim about whether or not they have family in the United States. Talk me through what the Biden administration's plan looks like, what it is they have previewed, and what, as you said, it would look like to actually operationalize it. Yeah, so the Biden administration's proposal would surge resources to the border. It would increase processing efficiency, which is critical. It would bolster the nonprofits like Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service and local communities on the ground to make sure that these families are treated with dignity. But I also agree with the comments just made. We do need to recognize that the administration is constrained by an immigration for framework that hasn't been reformed in 30 years and that doesn't align with the economic needs or moral values of this country right now. So we also can't give Congress a pass just because inaction has become the status quo, but because, frankly, the American people are sick and tired of waiting for immigration reform. Yeah, I mean, listen, hey, is there, there's sort of our legitimate conversations to be had about capacity, right? Whether mm -hmm. it is in states that are more sort of immediately dealing with an influx of migrants, whether it is states like New York, like Washington, D.C., and cities like New York and Washington, D.C., that are now getting buses uh, of migrants sent to them, uh, the capacity issues there. That's one piece of it, right? There's also, though, just sort of the boogeymanning that we know is forthcoming, not just from Republicans themselves, but from an entire right-wing eco chamber. That's not going to focus just on, okay, there's a capacity issue. Here is what would need to happen in order to address that and meet the need. Right. And if more Republicans were willing to have that conversation to say, look, the people who are managing our border are overwhelmed. Let's give them the resources that they need to actually have a manageable flow of people who are waiting in line to come into the United States versus, like you say, the boogeyman factor, the idea that the conflation of the idea that all people who approach the border are trying to sneak into the U.S., that all people who are coming to the United States are coming for using like completely outdated and honestly racist tropes about they're coming to steal hardworking Americans' jobs and all of that nonsense. When in fact, you know, um, the economy is struggling with the dearth of migrants that we have been seeing over the last several years, thanks to the Trump administration and the pandemic. Like the, the, the fact is that so much pressure has been built up at the border over the last few years that is up to Biden up to the Biden administration to uh, release it in a way that does not overwhelm the system. But because the system has been so purposefully neglected during the Trump administration and because of the intransigence of Republicans, then you, you have a case where the Biden administration, in wanting to push forward with these changes to actually work within the broken system we have as best as they can, they are worried that in doing so, they are going to have the system collapse entirely. And so Republicans benefit from that either way. It's a win-win for them. Either the border is overwhelmed or they uh, get to push back and say that, that uh, the Biden administration is opening the border and causing this chaos.